Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First things out the way, thank you for coming. Those of you who were curious and those who were maybe escorted here. My name is Mr. Rossetti. My associates and me have taken an interest in your town and are gonna be here for a while. So we thought it only neighborly to introduce ourselves. Jip Rossetti was one of the most violent, psychotic, and interesting characters in Boardwalk Empire. Now I dare someone to point out a boring scene with Jip. He's got none. Every time he was on screen, it was always a good scene. He feared nobody, and if you said the slightest thing off to him, you could be paying with your life. To go along with his violent behavior was actually this dark humor that I believe really attracted us fans to his character. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the rise and fall of Jip Rossetti in Season 3 of Boardwalk Empire. If y'all enjoy content like this, make sure to give your boy a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more of my videos in the future. I would really appreciate it. But it's your boy Evan Loud and Clear. I want to thank you all for being here. Let's get into it. I believe the end of Season 2 was good, but I think as fans, we can all agree it was getting a little slow. I think we can also agree that Season 3 really started off with a bang. After analyzing Rossetti, this was the perfect introduction to his character, and here's why. He shows us a bit of that dark humor. Where's Walt Wallet when you need him, huh? <laughs> then he shows us about his sensitivity and incapability to take a joke. Could have been a tool. Pardon? Three and one. What else you said? Could have been a wrench or something. I don't see how it could have been a wrench. Or a solvent of some type. And of course, he shows us his violent nature by beating the poor car mechanic to death. So we instantly know that season three is going to be different than the previous ones. He shows his dominance and his ability to insult anyone during the scene in the basement at the New Year's party. Promise this year that stick it only halfway in. And you, you smug kike midget, creeping around like a fucking dentist with the ether. Why don't you watch your fucking shit? Why don't you go sit in the corner, short pants? Breadstick in a bow tie. You pasty faced cocksuck. I'll shit you out like yesterday's sausage, you bog trotting prick. Rossetti just stole every scene he was in, man. He sets up shop in Tabor Heights, which is around 60 miles north of Atlantic City. And from there, he's able to block Nucky's supply of booze going to Arnold Rothstein in New York. He burns the sheriff of Tabor Heights alive, and then he ambushes Nucky's supply to Arnold Rothstein, murdering dozens of men in the process. Once you take a look past Jip's psychotic behavior, he was actually a pretty strategic guy. Yeah, I know, his methods were crazy, but they were effective. He was well aware that there was one way in and one way out at Tabor Heights. He knew the back roads were basically undrivable that time of year, and they would have no other choice than to come through Tabor Heights. He capitalized on the opportunity and ended up with all the booze. This is the rise of Rossetti. Although we see Jip in New Jersey a lot, you gotta remember, he's a part of the New York Mafia, and his absence on the streets in New York was a problem for Joe the Boss Masseria. He was losing money and territory to other crews due to his focus on Nucky Thompson in Atlantic City. Joe the Boss sat him down and it appeared he was going to have Rossetti killed. But Jip gave one of the best speeches in the show that saved his life, for the moment at least. After that, Masseria provided Jip with enough muscle to go to war. I'll bring you Thompson. Now what do I care about, And I'll bring you Rothstein. Luciano and the kikes he runs with, I'll kill them all. And when I do, they're not going to call you Joe the Boss no more. They're gonna call you Joe the King. Rossetti went to Atlantic City with an army 
and pitched the tent at Joey and Darmody's uh, gentleman's club, I guess we'll say. And I think we all know that that relationship wasn't going to end well. Jillian and Jip were two of the craziest characters on the show, and seeing them interact was always interesting. It didn't take long for Jip to realize that Jillian wasn't a fan of Nucky's Otter, and Jip would use that to his advantage. Jillian told Jip that Nucky was meeting Arnold Rothstein at a restaurant later that evening. Jip Rossetti blew the entire restaurant up, causing multiple deaths, and the main person that ended up getting killed was poor Billy Kent. Rossetti didn't stop there, though. Then he proceeded to call Nucky and read Billy's obituary to him. I mean, this man was just so disrespectful. Get in the comment section and let me know what the most disrespectful thing you think Jip Rossetti did in the whole show. I mean, uh, it's going to be hard, but get in the comment section and let me know. After that, Nucky vowed to have Rossetti killed. Rossetti sent some men for Nucky at the Ritz, but he got away. With Nucky on the run, Rossetti quickly moved in and started claiming everything in Atlantic City that belonged to Nucky. Jip also went to see Nucky's friends to tell them that things would be better now that he's running everything in Atlantic City. One of the first people he goes to see is my man Chalky White. Jib had a good feeling Nucky was hiding out there, but lucky for Nucky, Chalky didn't give him up. Jip seemed to be in full control of the war, but there's two things he didn't count on. Chalky having as many guns as he did and Nucky receiving help from Al Capone due to a deal made by his brother Eli. I believe this was the start of the fall of Jip Rossetti. The war in Atlantic City was costing money and men. Masseria stated he gave Rossetti 43 men, and Jip got 12 of them killed for no reason since Nucky wasn't dead. I think there's a few other things that Jip didn't see coming that led to his demise. He didn't expect Nucky to make a deal with Rothstein that would pull all of Masseria's muscle from him. And he definitely didn't expect Mr. Richard Harrow. Oh, Masseria's ordered. Oh, oh, get down! No, no, no! What was also probably shocking to Jip, but not to the rest of us, was the betrayal of Tonino. If y'all go back and watch season 3, Jip wasn't very good to any of his men, Tonino in particular. He would always talk down to him, and he killed poor Franco, who was Tonino's cousin. Jip really showed his men no loyalty, so his problem was thinking that in the end, they would be loyal to him. One could easily say that Jip just couldn't get out of his own way. He had plenty of opportunities to make a deal for peace and to just leave New Jersey and go back to New York. He took things too personally, and Arnold Rothstein even told him, in this business, you couldn't take things too personally. There was definitely no shortage of pride in Jip Rossetti but I believe his pride is what got him killed. If Arnold Rothstein didn't make that deal with Masseria, I believe it was only a matter of time before Masseria pulled the plug on Jip himself. But let me know in the comments what you think. I well, see that makes sense. Jip Rossetti was one of my favorite characters in the show. I hate to wrap this up, y'all, but I think it's that time. I just want to say, Bobby Cannavale killed the role of Jip Rossetti, and he was actually the only actor to receive an Emmy for supporting role, and he earned it. I just want to thank you all for taking the time out of your days to watch the video. If you enjoy the video, make sure you give your boy a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for the rest of my videos in the future. I would really appreciate it. But it's your boy Evan Ladd and Clear. I'm out of here.